Something a bit more fun uh, than our last story. Google's artificial intelligence developer DeepMind has said they're close to replicating human-level intelligence in computers. They claim it's all safe, but another AI company called Clearview has just been fined £7.5 million by a UK watchdog for collecting images of people from online photos and adding them to their global <coughs> database. Billions of images, I believe. So, is the development and pursuit of artificial intelligence safe? or should we be putting a stop to it? Well, Andrew Eborn is a broadcaster, a lawyer and a futurist who joins us now in the studio, I'm delighted to say. Welcome it's, to the programme. It's a delight to be on with both of you and avoiding the Kardashians. I think it's a great <laughs> segue. It's got to be good. Okay, let's just start with futurism yeah. as, as a profession. It's, it's your job to sort of spot trends and, and see what's going to happen it's in the future. It's absolutely that. And we, what we say, we always say that history repeats itself. And the reason that history repeats itself is because we never learn the lessons from history. Mm. And that's what we look at, little patterns in history to say, how can we predict the future? And as you know, I've got a 100% record of predicting the results of elections, predicting what might happen in terms of technology. And they always say, look, where there's a will, there's a way, and necessity is the mother of invention. And I also, in addition to that, celebrate failure. Because if necessity is the mother of invention, well, failure is the father of success. Mm. So you look at what might have failed in the, in the past and work out how you can learn those lessons. Mm. And the great thing about AI, artificial intelligence, is a seismic moment in history. Because whilst we don't learn the lessons, AI can. Mm. And I think what's really important, I try to jargon bust, if you like, what is AI? Mm. Well, it's actually been around for about 70 years. Uh, the term artificial intelligence was invented uh, by, uh, I think, in 1955. And it's to do with basically learning the science and learning of how machines can learn mm. from various bits of code. And machines themselves writing that code. We often use the word algorithm mm. as, as some sort of scary thing. I, I think one of the interesting things about so much of the internet as we now know it is the algorithms aren't written by human beings. The algorithms are written by computers. Oh, it's brilliant stuff. And I tell you what, again, jargon busting, there are two types of AI. There's narrow AI, which is a specific task. So you say to Alexa, it's going to happen all around the nation now, Alexa, <laughs> turn on the lights, it will turn on the lights. It's not Apologies to everyone at home, really? the lights have just turned on. Alexa, don't <laughs> tune into any other channel than GB News. <laughs> it's got to be good. Uh, but the principle there is it's a very specific task. So it's not doing any thinking. Mm. It's just listening to the words and it will do that. Mm. What we're talking about is basically wider than that is what they, the deep mind stuff does what's called artificial general intelligence. That's much what it's AGI. And what that is, it's a machine that has the ability to understand or learn any intellectual task a human can do mm. without training. So that's when the machine starts to think for itself. Mm. And AI, I predicted this many years ago, it's basically been used for all sorts of things, from creating content. So it created a new episode, for example, of the Flintstones in 2018. Really? Wow. What they did, they fed in all the Flintstone videos mm. and said, OK, here's a rough sort of script, produce something. Mm. And it was a pretty good uh, creation on that sort of side. Equity, the Actors' Union, I've been warning them for years that actors and voiceover artists and so on and so forth will be replaced mm. by AI, mm. where you're taking people's imagery and yeah. creating movies can and so I, on Can so I just um, pick you up on that point? Because I want to get to what, what do you think some of the more sentimental uses of AI would be? Because all of this tech stuff is far removed from a lot of people in this country. But could there be the potential, for example, of almost recreating a lost loved one in a way or things like that? Because there are people who would want to, to do oh, that. I, absolutely. And, and we've talked about virtual uh, memorials, yeah. if you like. Yeah. I, I also work with holograms, mm. which is reproducing people. They look and feel and sound like the real artists. It's happening in the world of music and so on and mm. so forth. We all see that. You can recreate. People have asked me to help them recreate their favourite pet. Mm. And you can have it in the corner and it will be purring away or barking if it's a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> You're working on that sort of basis. Mm. So absolutely creating those memories. I've also warned that the new currency is data. Data is the new currency. And the reason people object to it is basically our data is being absorbed. When you fill in these questionnaires and take part in these uh, uh, little experiments on Facebook and 10 years ago and post what you did, throw back Thursdays mm. and so on and so forth, or mm. have your profile done in AI mm. um, so you get a cartoon version of yourself, all of that's basically gathering data. Mm. So be very careful. If you do that, open minds. I say forewarned is forearmed. And yet, Looking at all of this, there is the nefarious side. Many people will be aware of the brilliant Charlie Brooker TV show Black Mirror. Absolutely. Where, where there have been many situations where AI goes bad and, and potentially AI that's more intelligent than human beings yeah. could be dangerous. But I suppose to those who say we must stop it, 
it's, it's very, very hard to stop technology developing. You can't really uninvent things. Well, it's the rise of the machine and actually great minds such as Elon Musk. He said it's the biggest existential threat that we have at the moment. Professor Hawking, hmm. also, he warned about it. He basically said, look, artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Mm. So what you need to do, whilst we're looking at these great advances, you need to work out a stop mechanism, if you like, mm. the sort of red button. I mean, and uh, Dr. Stuart Armstrong responded very, very recently. He said, um, if you uh, could misinterpret, if you say prevent human suffering, could say, well, prevent human suffering, you could put them down as they might do at an effect. So kill all humans, that will mm. stop human mm. suffering. Mm. So if the machine is not basically programmed to have a stop mechanism, mm. there are those risks. Mm. But at the same time, you don't want to scaremonger. It is no. tremendous. You can solve diseases. And whilst all the, 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 uh, the media has been focused on party gate and, and terrible wars happening and the pandemic, some fantastic developments have happened. We've had uh, the human uh, genome. Uh, genome. You, you basically would manage to get the sequencing of that. What that means is we have the recipe, the DNA of being able to cure diseases. Mm. And you combine that with AI and fantastic medical advances, we're in a brilliant, brilliant position. Oh, I do like hearing some good news. We like good news. On a Tuesday yeah. morning. Thank you so much for bringing yeah, us. Yeah, I could, I could listen to you for, for ages. And my gosh, if teachers had your enthusiasm when teaching <laughs> subjects, we'd have very clever children in this country. Yeah, we'd have a Silicon Valley in the United Kingdom. Yes, that, would yes. be a, that would be a good. Well, Andrew, Ibon, thank you so much for joining it's us. It's a delight. See you soon. Yes.